I want to be a teacher when I grow up. Elementary teacher. I like little kids. A babysitter. A pastor. A dolphin trainer. A gentle without each bunch. A hair cutter. A person who helps in charities. I'm a cashier at Walmart. An author. Chapter books about mythical creatures and animals and things. I want to be a lawyer. Lawyer. Pilot. Pilot. Pilot? And a dad? A pilot racer dad? Scientist. Scientist. Paleontologist. Mind for dinosaur bones and studies them. YouTuber. Movie star. A famous actor. 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 <laughs> On stage, on TV, on Disney Channel, or commercials. I gotta be a model. Model. I work it. If I want a model, I just be a policeman. Police. 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 Police officer. I cop on car chases. Cash bad guys. I see bail. Batman. By the mail. Good morning. Good to see you all today. Everyone doing all right? All right, well, I'm excited to speak today. Uh, we love this, right? We love seeing uh, kids dream. We love kids having this look in their eyes, seeing and believing that they can do anything. And I love that, we all love that. And something I've seen along the way is, if we're honest, we've lost that look in our eyes, that ability. Life wears us down a little bit. We go through these different challenges and we start to dream less the older we get. And so today, I'm really excited to talk to you about dreams. And uh, one of my favorite stories of all times is about this Canadian biologist named Farley Moat. And he's kind of this nerdy guy, he's this researcher, and he has this dream, he's always had this dream that he's wanted to go into Alaska's wilderness and study wolves. And this book, Never Cry Wolf, is based upon this figure and so this guy finally gets the courage. He's never been camping in his life, all right? And he gets all this research gear, and he's going in the dead of winter into this Blackstone Valley in Alaska. So he hires this, this pilot, and this pilot starts to ask this kid, he's like, what in the world are you doing? Like, where are you going? And he starts to pry and try and figure it out. And he says, you know, are you, are you, are you mining for gold? Are you trying to find oil? And um, he's, you know, a little reluctant to share. He didn't want this guy to think that he's crazy going out in the middle of the wilderness to, to, to research wolves. And, uh, and through the process, this old pilot starts to drop this wisdom on this kid. And he said, you know where the, the real gold is found? He says, it's in the, the homes right now, in the living rooms, where these men and women, he says, they're, they're glued to the television screen, bored to death. He said, bored to death. And in that moment in the scene, all of a sudden, the plane, it's just, the engine stops. And all you can hear is the, the sound of the wind. And the pilot says, oh, Lord. <laughs> he says, take the stick. So this kid never flown a plane. He grabs his stick. And the old pilot goes down and starts rummaging to find a tool to fix the issue. And uh, he's kind of freaking out a little bit. And all of a sudden, he looks at him. He goes, you know what the real problem that needs to be fixed? He goes, Boredom, the problem of boredom. He said, you know how you overcome boredom? Adventure, adventure. You have to learn to dream again. And so all of a sudden, the guy steps out of the plane. He starts banging on, a, on a, a, what it seems to be like a, a frozen fuel line, starts hitting it. He comes back in the plane, cranks the engine on right before they go into the side of this mountain. <laughs> he grabs a stick, and they come over the mountain, and then they soar off into this majestic valley. And uh, I want to pick up in this book, I kind of just paraphrase the story. And I love this part because it says this here. It says, this pilot, he may be a madman, but he's also a genius. He knows the secret to a man's heart, the cure for what ails him. It says, too many men forsake their dreams because they aren't willing to risk or fear they aren't up to the challenge or never told that those deep desires and their heart are good. But the soul of the man, the real gold this pilot refers to, isn't made for controlling things. It's made to dream. It's made for adventure. Something in us remembers, however, family, that when God put man and woman on earth, he gave us an incredible mission, a charter to explore, build, 
conquer and care for all of creation. It was a blank page waiting to be written, a clean canvas waiting to be painted. Well, God never revoked this charter. It's still there waiting for a man to seize it. Heaven's ideas are waiting to be released through you. Let's say that again. You guys with me? Heaven's ideas are waiting to be released through you and through me. So we all come into this world as children we saw on this screen. We all see that we all come in starting not knowing we have limits on what we can do. We have to be told what we can't do. If you think about it, no kid sees that fiery glowing element called fire and doesn't believe that they can't touch it. They think they can. And you have to tell them, don't touch it. <laughs> they think they can play in the streets. They think they can talk to strangers. And all of a sudden through life, we start to get told what we can't do. And more and more through life, we get these limits that are placed upon us. And as we get a little older maybe, we get told like, look, you're not, you're not pretty enough to do this, or you're not tall enough to play this sport, or you're not strong enough, or you're not smart enough. And through life, these limitations get placed on you and on me. But God is creator. We can all agree on that in this room. God created the heavens and the earth. He created the birds, the fish, everything we see, the skies, the moon, the stars. But then he created you and me, male and female. Genesis 1.27 says we're the only pieces of creation that are created in God's image. So God had this dream, it says Hebrews 11.3, that out of which was nothing, God dreamed and then he spoke it into being. All the things that we see today. And if God can dream and speak it into being and then he created you and me in his image, now this is a little deep, but it means you and I are actually created to create. We're created to dream things we can't see, to speak them into existence, to co-labor with Christ, to do things that you and I can never do on our own. But what happens through life is the father of lies comes upon you and me and starts putting limits, wants to distract us of what you and I can accomplish in this lifetime. So just like God, we become most like him when we operate out of that intentionality. When we start to dream things that hasn't been seen, we start to speak them into existence. We start to allow God to move and operate through our lives. But if we're honest, some of us here today, we've allowed limitations to place on what we can and can't do. And so we're gonna talk through this today and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, we've worked through two weeks of intense messages. I'll leave those to my dad. Now I get to do something fun <laughs> and talk about something I'm super passionate on and something I believe God wants to unlock in our hearts today. So let's pray together. We'll dive into this. All right, <clears throat> Father, I just thank you for, for this time. Lord, you, uh, you're pretty clear that you want us to have this childlike faith um, Lord, you haven't put any limits on, on us. And so often we get caught up dreaming the wrong dream. And God, you are longing to release heaven's ideas through us today. And so, Lord, I pray that any distraction going on in our lives, Lord, that we would just kind of silence that right now. And Lord, we invite you, Holy Spirit, to speak to us, to reveal to us truth, Lord, let these words be yours and not mine. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm gonna talk through some things that limit us today to dream, and I, I really believe God's gonna unlock some things in our hearts today, uh, and if you can't tell, I'm very excited, all right? So let's dive into this. One of the biggest problems, and I, well, before we get going, if you have your apps, you have your phones, I say this every time. Someone asked me today, they said, you didn't say it. So I said, all right, I'll do it in a second. 99% of people who take notes go to heaven. He's like, I want you to say that joke. <laughs> it's not true, but I would encourage you to take notes and follow with me. One of the greatest problems of why we stop dreaming is because we've been burned along the way. 
but we've been told we can't. We tried something and it failed. Or someone along the way said, you're not good at it, you can't do this. And we put these limitations and we say, creating is for the creatives. <laughs> Dreaming is for the entrepreneurial type. We say crazy faith is for the crazy faithful. But I wanna hear you today to tell you that that is one of the greatest lives the enemy can place upon you. Heaven's ideas are created to come through you, not upon anyone else. And so how do we get back to that? And the solution today is we gotta know our identity. Say, who am I? A little louder, say, who am I? <laughs> Jeremiah 1.5, it talks about how you were imagined in your mother's womb. And so I wanna say this phrase to you all today that I believe this is who God wants to unlock in us. Say this with me. You were imagined to imagine, created to create. You are both a work of art and an artist at work. Man, if you're next to your wife, say, you are a work of art. <laughs> Go ahead and tell her. You are a work of art. <laughs> if you're dating her, it's a little risky, but it might work. <laughs> See, dreaming isn't something we try and do. It's actually who God has created us to be. It's an identity switch that every one of us in this room, we were imagined to imagine. You were created to create. You are a work of art and an artist at work. This is who we are, this is our identity that we must learn to start to claim. One of my favorite chapters in all of Bible is Hebrews 11. I wish I could go through all of it, but it would run out all the time. And uh, I wanna encourage you guys this week to read this entire chapter of Hebrews 11. It's incredible. It starts at the very beginning where we've got all these legends of the faith and it goes verse by verse talking about all these different people from all the beginning, from Adam and Eve all the way up to Jesus and his disciples and everywhere in between in this one chapter, it talks about these heroes. And one of my favorite stories, which we'll, we'll pick up here in verse seven, we pick up on the timeline of Noah. All right, in this verse here, it says, faith opened Noah's heart to receive revelation and warnings from God about what was coming, even things that had never been seen. So how do you see something that's never been seen? You have to imagine it. <laughs> but he stepped out in reverent obedience to God and built an ark that would save him and his family. By his faith, the world was condemned but Noah received God's gift of righteousness that comes by believing. This incredible story of Noah, God gives him this dream, this vision to build an ark where there had never been rain. Have you guys heard this story before? He, we, we, we read about this and it, it kind of blows my mind when you dive into it a little bit that this man, God gave this vision to build an ark and it took him 100 years to build this ark. Can you imagine the people that were ridiculing him and saying, what are you doing? We've never even seen rain before. But this man knew who he was. And you know the only difference between you and I and Noah? Nothing. <laughs> there is no difference. See, you and I, we were created to create. We were imagined to imagine. We are both a work of art and artists at work. And I wanna tell you today, it's not about you being the next Noah. It's not about you being the next genius. It's about you being generous with your ideas to the world. I wanna say that again. It's not about you being the next genius. It's about you being generous with the ideas that God wants to place inside of you to release to the earth. And so you and I have to learn to claim our identity. Dreaming isn't something we do, it's something, it's who we are. You and I are dreamers. Say, I am a dreamer. <laughs> the second problem we know is operating out of faith is hard. How many of you know that dreaming a dream is a lot harder than living the dream? <laughs> Can I get an amen? Because somebody, <laughs> dreaming the dream is a lot harder than living the dream. 
How many business people in here know a business idea is a lot easier than 10 years of a successful business? I'll bring you into a little bit of my world, uh, part of the Harborside music team, and I love writing songs, but let me tell you, a song idea is a lot different than a completed song. One of the songs we sing here, No Limits, came out in literally 15 minutes. It was the easiest song idea that was just boom, God just released it. We have a song that we're doing tonight for our worship night. Love for you guys to come back. But we're going to sing this new song, and it's called Offering. And this song, the idea came. It's not too long to write it, but then there were two lines at the end that literally, when I say it took two days, and not just like, like an hour here one day, an hour, two whole days we as a team were, were stuck in this room. We knew this, God, this song God had given us, and it took two full days we did sleep, but other than sleeping, we worked on two lines, and it was the hardest process that I've ever been through to get this song out. But what I realized is the whole time that we're pursuing these dreams and releasing these ideas, it's the whole time that God is working on us. And what I love about this is the solution to these difficult dreams that we have is we got to start listening to stories. So there's a guitar player who plays on stage with us. His name is Pablo. He'll be here tonight. He plays a white guitar. I don't think he's in the service. Uh, I love him to death. He and I met in college. We studied jazz guitar together. And uh, along the way, one summer, Pablo and I roomed together. And Pablo is one of the funniest, coolest guys and he's married now, he's got two kids. And this past fall, we got asked to lead a worship conference in Ohio. So all the youth, all the youth groups come together and they put on this worship, uh, this conference, three days, and they invited Harborside Music and it was, it was awesome. But he and I get roomed together, we're, we're rooming together in this hotel, okay? <laughs> Haven't been in the same room with Pablo, you know, like this in like eight years. I'm going to try not to laugh too much as I tell this story. All right. <laughs> so Pablo, right before we're going to sleep, he says, um, bro, he's got this Peruvian. He's from Peru. He's got this accent. He's like, bro. I'm like, what's up, man? He's like, is it cool if we listen to this bedtime story? <laughs> <clears throat> and I'm like, dude, I'm a man. Like, I don't listen to bedtime stories. <laughs> He's like, bro, no, no, it's for, it's for adults. He's like, it's this, it's this app that you can listen to bedtime stories. And I'm like, dude, no, nah. like, <laughs> I'm not listening to a bedtime story. So he starts talking through this, and, and he's like, bro, just trust me. We'll listen to it. It'll work. So Matthew McConaughey is the narrator for this bedtime story. <laughs> And it's, it's on this, this app, and, you know, there's all these sleep apps and all these different things now. So Matthew McConaughey comes on here, and he starts in this slow, like, voice, like, settle your head into your pillow. And you're listening to this, and I kid you not, three and a half minutes into this bedtime story, I was out. <laughs> we wake up the next day, he's like, bro, what'd you think of the bedtime story? And he goes, I asked you after it was over what you thought. And he goes, you didn't respond, so I guess it worked, huh? And I was like, it worked. <laughs> and I started thinking through this. And you know, as children, we read our, our kids these, these stories, and what it does is, you know, there's all this chaos in their minds, and you start reading these stories, and you get caught up in what's going on, and then all of a sudden, their mind is at ease, and they're out. <laughs> we see this a lot today with adults, to turn on movies or different things to kind of numb their mind from all the craziness that's going on. And before you know it, you know, you're out. And we're on our, our journey home, and it was almost like God just, like, spoke to me. And I'll never forget this moment. And God was saying, just as when you started listening to these stories, it eased your mind, and you started to dream, you need to start listening to my stories of what I'm doing so it'll ease your mind from all the fear, all the chaos, and it'll help you to start dreaming again. When you and I hear God's stories of what God is doing in this earth 
in people's lives, when we read Hebrews 11 and what God has done and what he wants to continue to do, when you get around dreamers, dreaming God's dreams, you can't help but dream. When you get around people who put limits and just continue to say what you can't accomplish, what do you do? You stop dreaming. And so as you and I start to listen to these stories, God starts to raise these dreams up in us. And this is this passage. We read verse 7. Now we read verse 8 together. This is talking to Abraham. It says, faith motivated Abraham to obey God's call and leave the familiar. (laughs) That line is very intense. Who wants to leave the familiar in their lives? Leave the familiar to discover the territory he was destined to inherit from God. So he left with only a promise and without even knowing ahead of time where he was going. Abraham stepped out in faith. He lived by faith as an immigrant in his promised land as though it belonged to someone else. He journeyed through the land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, who were persuaded that they were also co-heirs of the same promise. His eyes of faith were set on the city with unshakable foundations, whose architect and builder is God himself. Women, listen to this. Sarah, Sarah's faith embraced God's miracle power to conceive even though she was barren and past the age of childbirth. Some of us today need to hear this story. Men in the room, you need to hear that Abraham, this older man, left that which was familiar, that which he knew, to pursue that which was unfamiliar. Some of you today have been doing the same things your entire life, that which was familiar to you, and you haven't ever stepped out to do what God created you to do, and you're this place of being stuck. Women, Sarah was 90 years old, and God told her she was gonna have a child, and she believed there is no limit to what God can do through your life, women. There is no age restriction. Heaven's ideas don't stop being released to you just because you're older. God is looking for someone who will believe that I was created to create, no matter how old I am, no matter what I've been through, no matter what's happened to me, that I was imagined to imagine that I am a work of art and an artist at work. It doesn't stop. Unfortunately, the older we get, typically, the more we look in the rearview mirror instead of looking for what God wants to do through you and I. We continue to read Hebrews 11. It goes on. It says, what more could I say to convince you? This is at the end of the chapter now. There's not enough time to tell you the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Through faith's power, They conquered kingdoms, established true justice, their faith fastened onto their promises and pulled them into reality. It was faith that shut the mouth of lions, put out the power of raging fire, and caused many to escape certain death by the sword. Although weak, their faith imparted power to make them strong. It's not about you being the next genius. It's about you being generous with God's ideas. Thirdly, The problem is we're caught up. (laughs) It's so easy for you and I to get caught up with all the things of this earth. We start to build our earthly kingdom. We start to dream of what we could do here. And we forget that we have a short window, a chronology, each of us on this earth. So many years. We have no idea what that day comes and when it ends but we can get so easily caught up in building our kingdom here on this earth and forget that we're going to be in heaven for eternity. How long is eternity? Eternal, it's forever. We're going somewhere for eternity and we can get so easily caught up in dreaming dreams of what God wants to do here on this earth instead of dreaming of what God can do through us for eternity and so today, What's the solution to this? It's this verse we see here. The the whole chapter goes, Hebrews 11, all right? And it ends and it starts chapter 12, verse one with this. This This is for us here today. It says, as for us, all of us in this room, 
We have all of these great witnesses who encircle us like clouds. We have all of these people who've gone before us. It says, because of this, we must let go of every wound that has pierced us and the sin we so easily fall into. Then we will be able to run life's marathon race with passion and determination, for the path has been already marked out before us. Who's grateful that the path has been marked out for you? <laughs> it says we look away from the natural realm. That's just the sermon in itself. <laughs> we look away from our natural realm, what's happening here on this earth, and we fasten our gaze onto Jesus, who birthed faith within us, and who leads us forward and to face perfection. So today, the two things, two questions that I wanna ask you guys, and I believe these two questions are going to gear us forward into our intention. And the first one is this, that verse we read in Hebrews 11, 12, verse one. It says we gotta let go of the wounds and the sin that we fall into, because the enemy is after you each and every day to distract you. He wants to do everything he can to distract you from releasing God's ideas through your life. So there's been wounds that have happened to you that you continue to hold on to. There's sin in your life that continue to fall trap into. And we go back to that which is familiar instead of going into this unfamiliar place that God has for us. So today, what is it that you need to leave behind? because God wants you to release his ideas to this earth. What do you need to leave behind? And then secondly, what would you do if you were brave? In my life, being brave looks like this. What would you do if you were brave? If you had the courage to dream big dreams, to not say what can I accomplish on this earth, but what can you accomplish through me? And I believe today the answer to that question will unlock something in you that when you pursue that, you will experience God in an incredible and new way because he has placed that in you. Ephesians 3.20 says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all of this. Read this with me. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo all of them for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. In this verse, it says, whatever that bravery thing is, whatever that stepping out in faith looks like, whatever that thing Jesus calls Peter, to get out of his boat and to walk on the water. And I love that story because it represents this place of comfort. The boat's a comfortable place, but Jesus calls him to step out of it to do the impossible. And when his eyes are fixed on Jesus, what happens? He walks on water. What happens as soon as he takes his eyes off of Jesus, he sinks. So God is calling you and I to get out of this familiar place and to begin to dream big dreams, to have wild imaginations and great requests because when we're operating out of that place, that's when you and I are alive. And so today, I wanna to leave with this. God's ideas for the world come from the person who has the courage to dream them. I wanna invite you to stand to your feet today. I wanna invite the prayer partners today down and um, I'm excited to pray for you guys right now. So join me. Um, God, I thank you for every beating heart in this room. Lord, I thank you for creating each and every one of us. And today, Lord, I pray that you unlock our identity, that creating is not for the creatives. Lord, creating is for each and every one of us in this room. You have created us to dream, to imagine, and Lord, we will watch you outdo our greatest imaginations and our wildest requests, Lord, because you are working in us and through us. So today, Lord, I speak for people in this room who 
have been doing the same thing their whole life and neglecting what they've been created to do today, that that will be released. Lord, I pray that out of this church, Lord, that movies will come about, that songs will come about, Lord, that giftings will come about. Lord, I pray for business people in this room that your dream, not what they can accomplish with their business on this earth, but what you wanna do to build the heavenly kingdom will come about today, Lord. I pray for parents in this room, Father, that they will not put limitations on their children and tell them who they are and what they can't be, but Lord, that you would use them to speak into their children's life who they are and what they're created to be, that there is no limits. And Lord, we will see out of this church a next generation of children rise up, Lord. They won't be caught up in boredom, but they'll be caught up in you and what you're doing. So Father, we thank you for what you wanna do in us and through this church. Lord, we, we know that you've created us and you've created us to create. And so Lord, I pray that you inspire us, that we would leave behind the things that distract us. And Lord, we would run towards the things that you're calling us to do. Lord, we love you, we worship you, we praise you. It's in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Thank you for joining us online for this week's message here at Harborside Church. Your generosity helps make a difference in the world that we live in and helps impact the lives of others nearby. If you want to partner with us in being able to contribute online, you can go to harborsidechurch.org give, or you can text Harborside to 77977 to make a donation. Thanks for joining us today.